Question L O one. So all objects in a 3D game will have a position and may actually be a collection of many different positions, such as in a mesh. They are rendered by being projected onto the screen. I'll now go through the maths involved in that process. Points and vectors. Points are dimensionless and they may be located in space from their coordinates. Vectors, however, do not have a position. They are different. They represent a displacement. So these two vectors here are equal, even though they are at different locations, whereas these two points are completely different. Adding or subtracting points will give you a vector. And vectors, of course, change under the coordinate system, and this is very important. Vectors can be multiplied by a scalar quantity. They can be added and subtracted. You can normalize vectors by dividing by their magnitude. There's a lot of vector arithmetic. So for example, the dot product is the product of the components of the different vectors. It's closely related to trigonometry, so hence, you know, these two forms are equivalent. I actually made a maths class, this module. Uh, so this, for example, is a function that uses a dot product to determine if two vectors are looking in, pointing in the same direction. In terms of coordinate space, they nicely combine points and vectors. So for example, all coordinate space have an origin. This is a point. They contain axes, however, and these are vectors. You get world space. So here, for example, we have a project I've been playing around with in Unreal 4. These axes represent the axes of the world space. Uh, a nice analogy is looking at the compass, you know, North, east, south, west are global world space directions. In terms of the direction of an, of an individual object, well, that is called local space. So, for example, here, the man is now being represented using his local transform. Uh, here is this local z-axis that I'm making move forward. Here is the local y-axis that I'm making move up or down. So here's a spaceship game I made in Ogre. And as you can see, when it is yawing or moving anti-clockwise, I had to make it roll first. So I used local space coordinates to make it roll. And then for the yaw itself, that was in world space coordinates, because otherwise it wouldn't work. It would start pointing downward. As you can see in Ogre, you can explicitly set your transform spaces, which is quite nice. In coordinate spaces, you can have left and right handedness. And that basically just means that you can, with a positive rotation, you'll either rotate anti-clockwise or clockwise. You can convert between transform spaces. So here, to go from world space to object space, you first translate the axes to the origin of the object, and then rotate the object, uh, the axes. And actually, um, you can actually represent this mathematically using basis vectors, which tend to be P, Q, and R. In terms of basis, uh, basis vectors, this is where matrices are quite useful. You can multiply vectors with matrices to change the vector. Here, for example, in row vector form or in column vector form. Note that the results are different and are transposed. So basically, matrices represent a coordinate space transformation. And this is because the rows of a matrix are these basis vectors I was talking about. Note also that the row is always equal to the dot product, again, so it's, it's equivalent. Typically, three by three matrices cannot translate and rotate. We have four by four homogeneous matrices to allow to do that. So note here, we can actually have a rotation or a scale or another transformation, reflection. And here we can have translation itself. We multiply this matrix by a four component vector. 
we end up with a translation, as you can see. To have no translation, we simply set this component to zero, multiply any number by zero, you get zero. Often this column is implicit, so often computer code such as fire does not include it. Uh, fire, for example, has four by three matrices. I actually wrote uh, code to make one of these matrices. Uh, I wanted to rotate a camera around an object at a certain distance. So I would get my rotation matrix, my three by three, and I'll then plug it into this four by four matrix with the translation. Uh, note, I did have that extra column, and this is because I am still learning how to use this stuff. But to optimize, I would remove this column. To divide, you simply, uh, sorry, to project onto a plane, you actually divide by the plane itself. In this case, W, like so. Before I talk about projecting onto a plane, however, or a screen, I need to talk about the camera. So we have a camera space. This teapot, for example, is in camera space. Cameras will have uh, different planes, a far, near, top down, left, right clipping plane, where anything outside these planes is not rendered. We have two types of camera, perspective, where you have depth information, and orthographic, with no depth information. Note that the planes will intersect a point in a perspective camera frustrum, whereas in an orthographic frustrum, it is basically just a rectangle, a cube. In a perspective camera, we have our field of view, and this helps define the zoom. Increasing the zoom here will increase the size of the image. And like in a real camera, changing the focal distance does not zoom the image, and we must do it manually. So to convert to camera space, we have to go from local space into world space and then transform the world space to the camera space. So here we have our clip matrices for clipping the image just before we project it onto the screen. So this is the clip matrix for a perspective camera. So notice it is a four by four homogeneous matrix. If we multiply this vector by this matrix, we end up like this. We can now divide by the depth. In an orthographic camera, however, it is just essentially just the identity matrix, and this will not change the vector at all. So there is no scaling by depth. Here we have a direct X clip matrix. It takes into account the zoom and the far and near clipping planes. Note here we have the one because this is for the perspective um, matrix. If it was orthographic, the one would be here. OpenGL uh, uses column vectors, and so the matrix is transposed. But this, is, again, is of the same form here. Our last role, then, is to go from clipping space and to actually map the pixels onto our two-dimensional screen. OK, and that's can be done with these equations here using the resolutions of the window and the device. So to summarize, we start off in object space, transform into world space, transform into camera space, we use a clip or a projection matrix to go into clip space, where we divide by W, the depth, offset by the size of the window into screen space, where we actually can our 3D coordinates into 2D coordinates.